Hey guys, uh, I wanted to post yesterday, but just didn't quite feel like I had enough material for everything. So uh, we've just compiled yesterday and today's footage into one video. So uh, about a week ago, I ordered some rare earth magnets. These are neodymium magnets uh, through a company called Total Element. And uh, word of warning to you guys, don't ever do what I'm about to do here. Uh, that little label I just took off, I probably should have read that. Um, but, overall these are really nice quality. Here's the, uh, I think they're quarter inch by half inch. Um, and these ones inside the bag here, these are 1 16th by 1 inch. And uh, here's what you're not supposed to do. Don't ever let them do this. Yeah, because they destroy themselves. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I basically told him in the, put him in the box and told him not to uh, do anything I wouldn't do. Here's me reprimanding inanimate objects. <laughs> but, uh, today what we're doing, we're starting out, we're going to go ahead and prep these butternut, um, boards for finish. And the finish we're going to be using is boiled linseed oil. It's not a finish I usually use. Uh, quick little word of warning for you guys who are thinking about using it Don't ever Leave your rags crumpled up afterwards um, Those of you who have used similar oil finishes in the past know this uh, Boiled linseed oil will spontaneously combust after about three or four hours If you just with the right conditions if you just leave them in a pile like at the bottom of your trash can with a bunch of stuff on top of it it will catch fire and a lot of her houses have burned down this way but what we're doing right now uh the only thing that's been done to these is the surface sanding so right now i'm just cleaning up the little quarter inch round over that i put up on there butternut does quite a bit of bad tear out when you're doing routing operations especially going with the grain for some reason never really understood it but butternut's a really soft wood and uh, it's just prone to doing stuff like that so what this is going to be is the top and bottom shelf of a wireframe magazine rack and we're just putting the finish on it here now what I'm doing is I'm prepping my little OMT. If you guys don't have one of these, you really should go out and get one. They're not expensive. Uh, the blades for them are, but the tools themselves are not expensive. And if you're like me and you already have an impact, you might as well buy the OMT in the same brand. So you can just use the battery with it. Uh, and the attachment I'm using here is the three and a quarter Diablo hook and loop sanding pad. And we're gonna be throwing on some Diablo 120 grit uh, 3 and an 8 sanding pads. These are awesome scissors, by the way. These crescent lists, these are the professional shears, I believe. Um, they have a smooth edge, unlike the industrial shears, which have a serrated edge. But they are tough, and they make quick work of this stupid bubble packaging that everybody seems to want to put their consumables in. So. So we're just gonna cut it out here and put it on the uh, hook and loop pad of the sander. But I figured I'd show you guys a little uh, overview. I'm kind of messing around with camera van cam camera angles and uh, just trying to find what works. I don't usually do this style of videos. So all I can do is try and see what works, see what doesn't. Uh, by the way, if you guys have any feedback you'd like to give me, feel free to give me a comment down in the uh, comment section below. It's probably just going to go on Instagram. It might go on YouTube. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, these little OMTs, they, there's so many uses for these things. My favorite by far is using them for detail sanding, as we're about to see here. But they're just an awesome tool to have around the shop. So here we are. What I like to use this for as well is uh, breaking the hard edges on boards like this. 
It's not really necessary for an oil finish, but I like to do it anyways. It gives you a more tactile feel. And uh, what we're doing here is we're going to be cutting the uh, angled blocks for the boards to sit on while we're doing our finishing. And as you can see, my new miter saw here has the uh, awesome feature of auto eject. <laughs> Every single one of these I cut just flew off in the great blue yonder and ended up beyond the uh, miter saw. So after a couple cuts, we end up with a pile like this. And I'll show you here how we use them. Now the reason we cut these at uh, opposite angles is we uh, give the board underneath as little contact area as possible. So when you put your finish on both sides, especially with an oil finish, you don't end up with weird um, stains or discolorations from a whole block of wood contacting it here. And just laying down our drop cloth now. And you always want to make sure you brush off any dust preferably vacuum off as well, but I didn't do that here for uh, the main reason is we're just doing an oil finish. So anything that's buried in the grain right now will come up with the rag when I put the finish on anyways. So why waste the effort? So here we are. The uh, boiled linseed oil we're using is the sunny side, which can commonly be found at Menards. And it's a gorgeous looking finish. I know it looks a little yellow here, but that's because there's a uh, there's an excess on the surface. Like here's the other one. And I didn't show it, but I also did the other side, obviously. So you just let this sit for, I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then wipe off the excess. It's kind of like tongue oil and uh, teak oil. You don't want to let it get tacky, but um, you do want to let it soak in. This is just one coat. I ended up doing two. And I'm going to finish them off with Watco Satin Wax uh, when it's in the house. But gorgeous engraving. And here's the next day. Uh, today we had a really, really warm day. And I don't understand why the thermometer says we're raining when it's obviously not. But for those of you who wonder, I am a coffee person primarily, though I do drink tea. And here we are after the second coat, and I ended up with a box from Acme Tools in the mail. So before I get started on what I wanted to do today, I had to uh, open up my box. So I got another spray bottle of the activator. Um, for the tight bond Sino acrylic glues and finally got myself a quality countersink that's bigger than 3 8 And we're just looking over the work from yesterday. And the reason I got, I have those drill bits with the countersink um, built into them, but the reason I got this in half inch is for uh, doing dowels. Um, I know some people don't do this, but it's a good idea to. Uh, after you drill your dowel holes, you want to uh, countersink the edge of the hole slightly so you don't get any uh, burrs or glue squeeze out to prevent the boards from fully closing when you're doing your panel glue up. And I uh, really like the look of this titanium bit. It won't look pretty for long, but you know enjoy things while they last. So with the uh, really warm weather today, we're going to be uh, blowing all the excess dust out from the hard to reach areas. Um, every shop will have this same problem, no matter how much air filtration you do, um, there's going to be dust buildup over time. So before we get to that, decided to uh, show Sage the rooster here. These are Easter eggers, by the way. They lay blue eggs, but this is the rooster showing us his good side. And here's the other flock. Bunch of different breeds. A couple Buckeyes standing in front. Um, and we've also got some Morans of different breeds. We've got a Mystic. we got Cuckoo Morans, we also have some black copper Morans. 
There's uh, Sal giving us the old wing flap. He's a Jersey Giant. But we had some awesome weather today. It was really nice to open up the doors and just kind of let all the dust fly out of the shop. And here's Sage again, getting his group into trouble, of course. What else do roosters do? And like the wind, they're gone. It was a windy day today. Uh, it was warm and windy enough for the uh, the goals to come off of Lake Erie and kind of join in the frenzy of flying around. But as you can see here, there's quite a bit of dust buildup, and this is from a whole winter's worth of operations. So before we blow everything off, we have to put everything away and just get everything that you don't want to be in the ominous dust cloud put away. Of course, I had a lot to put away because sometimes when you get in a work groove, you uh, end up not being the most organized person. I'm definitely guilty of that. But here we go. We're using the uh, shop vac, but putting the hose on the other way so we can just blow everything around. And you always want to wear a mask when you do this. As you're about to see here, it gets pretty ridiculous. It's always amazing to see all the dust come out from underneath all the shelves and all the nooks and crannies of the shop. Especially underneath the laser engraver. <laughs> so, on to the next project. Now, here for the next couple days, I'm going to be doing some small things uh, in preparation for getting the website ready. I want to have some basic inventory and uh, here we have some butternut cutoffs that uh, aren't really useful for anything else and this is just a little preview of what you guys are going to be able to see tomorrow. Uh, leave your guesses as to what I'm making in the comment section below and let me know what you guys think of these videos. They are fun to make, they're a little time intensive, but I figure while well, I've got the time now, I might as well do them. Um, 